guys, Eric Rodebois, EPGD Attorneys at Law. So I just did a one minute, so now we're gonna do a five minute. So let me tell the story. So I had a client that came to me, um, I will say they found me on Google and they were sure enough shopping around for a new estate planning attorney because their old estate planning attorney has been dead for about 15 years. And what they did is they had an original estate plan from 1981. Um, and I'm not gonna lie, they had a pretty complicated estate. And I've done this long enough to know what the easy estates are. So they had a couple holding companies solely owned by the gentleman and uh, in in a anonymous jurisdiction. Then they had assets in four or five different countries. They had children living in different countries. They had grandchildren living in different countries. And all they had was a will from 1981. So truthfully, a very bad situation if anything were to happen to them now, because the corporation solely owned by the gentleman with, and I was like, well, do you have shareholders agreements? Are there any succession language documents? Do you have anywhere in writing? If I pass away, I want my shares to go to my wife. No, like that, none of that existed. Um, in fact, those corporations were not referenced in the original will. Um, and then again, we, we, we've got to be concerned with Italy, UK, Norway, like lots of different countries, lots of different laws. And he had, this 1981 will, it looked like it was made on a typewriter and sure enough, their lawyer had passed away. So they find me and I, I will say that they really put me through the ringer. I went through like three consultations, culminating in a live meeting here in my office. And finally I get the email, we've decided to hire you. Um, congratulations, you're our pick. And I'm like, okay, great. So let's get this done. And I was going to help them clean everything up and put in place. And they didn't have basic things like even a power of attorney, a living will. And so for those of you who don't know, a power of attorney gives the power to somebody else. And we use this in a situation where maybe I'm in an accident and that other person needs to go to the bank and talk to my banker or talk to my financial advisor or heaven forbid, file a lawsuit on my behalf. That, that's what we can do with a durable general power of attorney. Then we've got the living will, which is an, another name for a do not resuscitate document, or more specifically, you can put in writing, if I'm in a terminal condition and the doctors say there's no chance of my reasonable recovery, I do or do not want to have life-sustaining treatment continued ad nauseum, or I delegate the power to my healthcare uh, surrogate to make these decisions for me, right? That can be very powerful if you're in a bad situation where you're in the hospital. Um, in fact, separately, I have a, a friend who's in the ICU right now, and they have a simple will and nothing else. So, and they're single, they're not married, and it's really hard to talk to the doctors. It's been really complicated. So I say to these people, um, the original people, I say, all right, listen, um, we should probably get this done. Now, as a side note, the gentleman was very elderly, um, and you know he, he looked okay, but didn't look in prime form. Um, his wife was quite a bit younger, uh, still you know up there, but younger. Um, and I, I was concerned and I said, okay, well, we should get this done sooner than later. And they said, well, we're going to go to the, to Europe for a while. And when we get back, we'll get it done. And I said, okay, well, when are you going to Europe? And they said, we're going the week after next. And I said, with all due respect, we can get this done. We can get this done. We have a questionnaire. We can actually sit down together right now and go through it. And you can pick who is going to be your executor. Who's going to be your trustee. Who's going to be your power of attorney. Who's going to be your healthcare surrogate. Let's get a choice A and B for each of those. Let's put it all in writing. Um, let's get our notary. Let's get a couple of witnesses and we could get it done realistically. I've done it in the same day. I have done it in one sitting where they were in my office for four hours. Um, more reasonably, give us a week, um, two weeks. I think we have no problem. And they're like, no, 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 we'll get it done. Well, what email did I get last night? I got the email that the gentleman uh, had a cold that turned into a flu that turned into pneumonia and now he is in the ICU in Europe. And I said, okay, well, we can rush and hopefully get something done right away. Um, and maybe we can manage to get the documents to you and you can go get them printed out where you are in Europe. And then this is going to be the hard part, right? We need to get a notary and two witnesses. And so how do we get a notary and two witnesses into the ICU in Europe? Well, the short answer is you probably can't. Um, and so at this point, we have to pray that he takes a turn for the better, gets out of the ICU, and then even if he's still in the hospital, we can hopefully get a notary to him. Um, that, and, not, and again, this is where things can get tricky because here in Florida, where, where his primary residence is, you really need to have a, um, you need to have a notary and two witnesses. It's gotta be live document with blue, wet ink. 
So we can't do it otherwise. So guys, um, Eric Grotebois, please, the moral of the story is, if you're gonna go on a big trip, get your documents done before you go. Don't tempt the fates. Um, and if you have any questions, give me a call.